All righty. Awesome. Salutations. Salutations to the sun, to this beautiful new day, to this beautiful new rising. And yeah, I'm so honored and I'm so grateful to hold this space and share this space with you in our deepest truth and exploration and just flowing with everything that wants to be presented today for the greatest benefit and highest good of all souls receiving this transmission for us to be this divine conduit and to just channel through this greatest truth and love. And thank you so much for joining me. Let's thank you for having in. me. Cheers to that. So yeah, um, it's so cool that we just randomly connected through social media, even though we were living quite in the same place for a while, but didn't connect then, but we did now. So divine timing as always. And I'm so excited to hear about your journey and wherever you would like to start, wherever it feels relevant for you to kind of give us a little background <laughs> around who you are, where you come from, how you started awakening, all that beautiful stuff. But yeah, whenever you're ready. Stellar. Absolutely. Everything in perfect timing. Such a wonderful reminder. It is hysterical that we are literally miles within the same vicinity. And somehow we went through the screen. So what a wild time to be alive yeah <laughs> so thank you for allowing us to be here shouts out to the star c network i've enjoyed everything i've experienced thus far i'm so grateful to be a part of this and in this conversation thank you who am i i guess a great place to begin with me just simply introducing myself hi mm -hmm. my name is gavin michael zen smith i began introducing myself as zen a couple of years ago but i started reintroducing myself as my birth name gavin last october these are all stories as to why getting into that. I'm not really attached to the name though. And it's a really mm -hmm. awesome experience learning how to witness oneself from a new space because we build so much of our identity based off of our name and what we've been called and associated with thine self for one's entire life. And by switching that up for a bit, it allowed me to it allows me to uh, expand and step into spaces which um, are much more in tune with my soul and my spirit rather than what the world has associated with my name or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I was working, I'll get into that story in a bit, but choosing the name Zen uh, is a, a lifestyle in which I would, I wish to embody greater. And so I started introducing myself as Zen. Uh, my pronouns uh, today I'm feeling are dude, the dude. So if you wish to refer to me in any other form of person, you can call me dude or the dude. Uh, I consider myself a gender bender. Um, and I'm learning how to step into this with more confidence and communication. I'm not something like prideful or like, oh, you're like out and about like super loud because like there's already enough people who look like me doing that. Though at the same time, it's so important uh, to recognize him. And it's such an essential aspect of my life, integrating the masculine and the feminine aspects within mm -hmm. myself to find who I am, find out why I'm here and what we're here to do. Uh, yeah, let's see. Where do I come from? Well, most people, most of the time when people ask me, where do you come from? I say the future. I think that's a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Feel free to share that. I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee on that one. <laughs> that's a, such a great way to uh, respond to that question. And, you know, some people are like, yeah, I see it. Some people are like, well, there's only here and now. Some people are like, I come from the past. I'm like, Hey, you know, we're all out here traveling in our own way. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty about it is we get to develop our relationship with the path. And that's, what everything is ultimately about, uh, learning how to turn inward and, and the journey of uh, stepping into oneself has um, always been a part of my life. Um, beginning to develop a, a conscious uh, direction and movement with this focus and energy, um, I'd say really started to develop about eight years ago. Um, this body was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, my, my mother, a single parent, uh, raised me and my two siblings, like powerhouse, dude. She's one of the greatest inspirations of my entire life. I've watched her go from waiting tables and having nothing to owning her own business, really starting to step into her gifts. And like, she is one of the biggest reasons why I'm able to open up spiritually on this level, because she's always encouraged this one up within our life. 
Uh, she was, uh, <laughs> if I'm being real, indoctrinated at a young age underneath the Catholic uh, programming. And thank goodness she did not, uh, and most of my family, like strong Catholic, fa- strong, big Catholic family, traditional Catholic family, right? Uh, she saved us of that programming. We were bastard children, according to the church, right? Like out of out of wedlock. My mom was a child when she had me. And we were definitely uh, surprises, to say the least. And um, at the same time, she raised us with the utmost love to the best of her ability. And she always raised us with the awareness that there is a God. She never um, forced us into the Catholic programming, but she did raise us in it non-denominational Christian church, like one of those big churches that are like open and like gigantic, like 3000 people in an audience, like live rock music type stuff. And like, as a young one, I loved being able to connect with the creator on that way, the creative energy and like seeing people with their hands in the air, just praising, like witnessing and feeling it through the music. I'm like, I know there's something here. Like she's always encouraged us to be tuned to it. And I'm so grateful for that experience, though I do not consider myself Christian any longer. And a big part of the process is unlearning and programming and uh, rewiring uh, one's own patterns and belief structures that are much more in alignment with one's core values and their relationship with that soul, um, which has been a big part of my journey thus far. And uh, moving here to California has really encouraged me along that journey. But like I said, I've always on some level been tapped in, definitely in my like preteen, teenage years lost touch of it, went through all that angst and all the transition of hormonal nonsense and all the traumas of just like integrating and all that stuff. It was a tough time, you know, shadow, dark night of the soul, but that's like really where we start to find ourselves, And then we just continue to uh, have those seasons, but with greater levels of awareness. And that way we can then embrace them and then move into them with confidence, strength, and grace. So that's our ability. And just remembering to breathe and, and when I was at the ripe age of 18, decided to leave the Midwest and flutter on my way to the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, my reason was university. Um, yeah, yeah, I was, I was lucky enough to, to be able to uh, find my way to San Diego State. And I started going to school there. And um, that was when I told my parents, I was like the first one. Um, like, my, my parents didn't go to college, so like, they were like, really excited for me to get accepted into honors college and move out and follow my dreams. And they're very encouraging, but it was also tough for them. They're also like, you know, we are working people. We can't, you know, support you. You have to figure it out. And I was like, I know I'm going to do my thing. Mm-hmm. And that like, I just threw myself to the wolves. Like that's a big part of my journey is just like throwing myself to the wolves and like learning by fire, honestly. And, um, <laughs> that's just I don't know maybe it has something to do with like my past lives and my soul's like definitely like what I'm saying right now like I'm just like for some reason I want to shout out Romulus and Remus and maybe we'll get into that later just the story of Rome and how that plays such a big part in our current reality uh, but those two beings being raised by the she-wolf um, is a very important detail in this story and it should not be forgotten just take note for whoever's watching um <laughs> <laughs> spirit cool. speaks um, yeah so i just found myself out here in san diego and i've just been uh, doing it my own way learning um along the flame and uh it's been quite the journey thus far i think this year i'm like just starting to get into myself again like for some while it was a very solid like transition and adaptation period because this space is much different from which i was raised i cannot express enough gratitude for the privilege and the honor and joy it has been and it is to be here and continue to learn alongside my fellow beings because really there's something about the energy in this city particularly that is like a vortex and I'm sure you could speak on that considering that you've spent shared time here and it really does have like capacity to open up all sorts of portals and windows for allow us to grow exponentially like like quantum leap you know like Mm -hmm. all that goodness and i've just been really diving into my path since then so when i moved out here i was basically like out of the cage my first time uh not knowing a single soul in a new space and this is where i was introduced to the path and practice of yoga meditation sitting this is when i began uh, diving a little bit deeper into buddhism 
and just the philosophy. That's where I was eventually introduced to uh, the Bhagavad Gita or Vedanta and Sanskrit teachings and, and Hindu philosophy. And this is like always, this is like such a big part of my journey. Um, yeah. And I would love to dive into this, but I also feel like I want to allow a moment to see if there's like, just check in because I know I'm, I, I like to ramble when I have the space and I appreciate your listening ability. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's so beautiful to, to hear and, and connect with your story. And yeah, I can personally attest that San Diego is a very powerful vortex. Um, I was drawn there almost a year ago this time. And my soul kind of spoke to me and was like, okay, it's time, time to go. Like I had been kind of manifesting it, dreaming about it. And then the moment came and it called me and I got on the plane. And as I was landing, I was looking down at the mountains and everything and just feeling so safe and so held. And the energy here and there, (laughs) you know, there's no separation. (laughs) But it really feels that like, that very ancestral energy is present there in the nature, in the stones, in the ocean. And especially in Ocean Beach where I was, it was very, very powerful portals and ley lines and just so much soul growth coming into contact with so many soul family members and just activating these grids in such a powerful way. And it also makes me wonder about like, the strategic almost placement of military bases there and a lot of military activity and also just the amount of like star energy activity that is felt there. So it's kind of an interesting thing to feel into as well on how these very powerful grids, like we're not the only ones aware of them and there are different energies kind of intermingling there. So it took a lot of discernment as well in that space. I feel like it's such a, like a paradise energy that it's very easy to just live in that pure bliss and embody that. But there is like a little bit of a shadow undercurrent that is also interesting to feel into. So I'd love to know what your experience is with that. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, just bringing awareness to that because that's so important to recognize. I just want to take a breath. I want to take a breath for all the blood that has been shed that simply allows me to sit here today Mm -hmm. and share this because this city is ancient way before San Diego existed. And you're speaking on the ancestral energy just wishes me to recognize. This has been a big part of my journey is like learning the process of like decolonization and like what Mm -hmm. has happened in order for us to even have these conversations, which is really like polarizing and something I'm very new to and I'm still Mm -hmm. finding my voice and speaking on. Though I do recognize that there's all sorts of injustices that occur on a frequent basis behind this paradise energy which is really wild to, um, you know, think. And when I first moved here, I was not aware of that. I was just like in the universe of university and then grounding into this space and then like sharing spaces with other individuals and becoming more aware of like the presence of the military here and like strategic placements of the bases, as you, as you said, mentioned, it's really curious. Like in 2015, uh, there's like some footage released off of the coast of Coronado where there's these objects that were just flying somehow knowing exactly where these uh, ships were going with their like hidden coordinates mission, right? They're just doing test runs or something as the media has reported. And somehow this object, no one knew what it was and where it came from and how it was at this capacity, knew exactly where the ship was going and moved much quicker than the U.S. ship to that space as if it was like, hey, I know where you're going, boom, then move back to it. It's like, ha, got you. And it's just like, and they're like, oh, we don't know what's going on. So there's definitely presence here of otherworldly beings. And mm. the ancients, I think, were in, in very strong 
knowing of this, I've been once told that there's a portal off the coast or a collapsed volcano off the coast of Pacific Beach, which is like 20 minute drive from here. And that this mm-hmm. created this vortex of energy, which uh, slows down the aging process. <laughs> this person mm-hmm. told me, he was just like, you know, a beach dude that's like out there on the cove every single day, just like tan as the rocks you know just always in the ocean like san diego we have some really amazing characters and it's really important to get out of the comfort zone and be able to have conversation with the divine and how it moves through our fellow creations like our fellow beings like our fellow reflections like and it's so important uh to recognize that there is still um unraveling here like the history is being rewritten and like i want to bring reckon reckon uh recognition to that word is story mm-hmm. and like how like everything we've been programmed pattern to believe the story of the unfolding of our current reality is maybe not necessarily uh the truth <laughs> and something mm-hmm. i very much value is the truth transparency and i i do my best to express this and all we can do is practice and doing this with the utmost compassion really and patience Um, has assisted me along my journey Um, and people who practice this compassion and patience for me have allowed me the space to step into it Mm -hmm. seriously like you're doing right now in this conversation just like we're just unraveling here and i appreciate this because i love getting super meta i want to keep going with one thing like Mm -hmm. you know uh, i wanted to just like mention how we were taught to think about how the united states or whatever was established like on the east coast all that nonsense. I like the first thing that like the pilgrims came over here and they just like started setting up shop. But the Spanish got to the West Coast much earlier than, than the pilgrims got to the East Coast. Like San Diego and this area of Mexico, like these lands known today as these, these names, because these are not even their original names. These are names given by colonizers. And so like I do my best to like recognize this when vocalizing this, you know, these are the names we've been programmed to recognize these spaces as, and there's now like a collective weight holding that, but we have the ability to like rename and it's not what you do. It's how you do it. So like San Diego could be like San Diego home, like San Diego, like it's my home Mm. here now. Now like this place has shown me that I have home within myself, but also like this land is, you know, has, was here called something. I'm unfortunately uh, not, we're calling the name at this time uh, what it was known as before the Spanish got here and called it San, like San Diego, like San Diego or whatever. However, like this place has been happening. Colonization has been moving deep here for a long while. And I think that just being able to recognize that allows us to unwind and unravel the knot more so that we can move forward because a part of me wishes to plant roots in this area a part of me feels like i've been here before and this is not how i remember it and Mm -hmm. so it's important for me to be a part of my process to restructure this reality so it's much more in alignment with my core values and what i see to be true and and uh having the ability to plant my roots here and uh build copacetic symbiotic connections and relationships is just like everything like i couldn't do it without the people who i link with on a frequent basis and able to restructure our reality whether it be in this city or my mind or you know like we have the ability like within my bedroom like literally we start small and then we we go forward from there like learning like because i i mentioned that because i literally have like little things just scattered across all my room like i'm, I'm not afraid i'm not uh ashamed to mention that like as they say like the mind of a genius is uh <laughs> a mess <laughs> <laughs> but like you know i'm like okay so it's like yo clean your room first and then you can start building a new city you can start overgrowing the government it's basically what we're gonna do um. <laughs> <laughs> yep i i feel that <laughs> like, this morning i'm like before i manifest anything i need to wash my dishes <laughs> honestly priorities, <laughs> priorities priorities that way we can create the space for these manifestations to unfold mm. and that's a big part yeah. of the learning yeah, it's it's interesting when you said like <clears throat> the people that you frequently get to link with. I was thinking like that frequency link, like the ways that we're all kind of just like coming online in this moment 
And we are creating this grid. We are creating this link. I always see it as like these little lights popping up. Like some of, there's like a lot of lights in San Diego and there's like a lot of lights in specific places. And that just like (sighs) connecting with that really deep earth energy as well has been something that I've really been intentional about recently because in San Diego, I feel like I was all water and wind. And here in Oaxaca, Mexico, I feel such a connection to the earth as well. And very similarly to some of the things that I experienced in San Diego, like that part of my journey was really meant to strip me down and strip me back and deeply, deeply humble me and put me in this position where I was up close and personal with all facets of life, like all facets of people. And as I'm sure you know, Ocean Beach has such a vibrant (laughs) community of all sorts of energies. And one particular thing that was very prominent to me was actually connected with this necklace that I was wearing for a while. Like I never took it off. It was like this little indigo necklace. And I was connecting to this alternate lifetime, this other lifetime of being in the geography of San Diego, being in like a native indigenous tribe and witnessing just like a whole, my whole life being destroyed, my whole village being destroyed and this deep just pain and anger and rage towards that colonizer, towards that patriarchal energy. And it was illuminated to me through a really deep tarot reading, actually, which is something else that we can get into <laughs> as well, because we're both in that world. Tell me more. Uh, yeah. And so I had this beautiful reading with the soul femme, a soul sister, and she illuminated this to me. And she was like, you have to take this necklace and return it to the land. You have to return it to the ocean. So I went through the process of accessing this timeline and experiencing this timeline and really just deeply viscerally healing it through my body. And as the process came to a close, I went to the pier and I took off that necklace and I put it back in the sea and I returned it. And then After that, it felt like my journey in San Diego, my lessons there, my whatever karmically I had to complete had come to a close. And I was then guided to come to Oaxaca in Mexico. And since I've been here, it's been such a rich, just coming home sensation and feeling deeply welcomed and deeply protected. And it had been calling me for a while. And finally having the courage to to listen to that call and, and find myself here. And it, it's interesting because yesterday I went to this whole event called the Galagetza, where they have all the different regions of Oaxaca come and present their traditional dances and clothing and food and all their traditions. And just feeling like these, this pride, this this really just like pre-colonial, also post-colonial, just memory and protection and respect for the traditions and respect for the ancient energies, like taking the time to, in the opening ceremony, honor all four corners and burn the incense, burn the copa, like really set open the ceremonial space. It's it's such a new paradigm that feels like we're bridging this ancient energy into the present because we are the ancestors. We are our own ancestors and our own guides and we are the future as well. So (laughs) we're kind of just bringing it in and, and grounding it through us, through our bodies, through our connection to source and just being that, being that open channel to create what this future looks like that is actually and meshed with with the true realness and groundedness. I'm so happy that you're finding yourself home. That's mm-hmm. what we're here to do. That's what everybody deserves. That's your birthright. It's not even you deserve it. It's like that's what you're here to do is to feel at home and it starts here. But sometimes, and most of the time, actually, there are spaces that much more allow us to attune to that frequency within here. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to backtrack just a little bit to you mentioning all of the lights in the grids in San Diego before we just tie off that conversation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's so easy to get lost in the lights. We live in a world that just has stimulation everywhere. We use, I would say like at least 80% of our information comes from our visual receptors, right? Mm -hmm. Have our eyes open all the time. It's much easier to get lost on the light around us. And it's so important to turn into the light within <laughs> and also to find our light within our darkness. Like that's mm-hmm. where it arises. And to remember this, so I'll never consider myself a light worker for I harness all of the energy. Mm-hmm. Lately, this download came to me of calling myself a rainbow worker because <laughs> I, I harness the light and the darkness and the dark, like the darkness is the mesh of all of the colors combined Mm. like that's when you take all the colors it makes the darkness right and then the light is like the expression of it before it becomes fractalized right the white light or whatever the the pure harness this light in all of our forms right it's just happening it's here it's the life force energy also someone call it water (laughs) and the water that we're like our, our, we're a product of our environment and it's the way we can listen to the water within us. And if there's a calling for us to move to another pond, water, like your heart, the water within you was calling you to move to Oaxaca. My heart was like, move to San Diego, move to here, here, here. It's so important for us to listen to those intuitions. And then our waters within can attune to the waters without. And that's where we feel even greater levels and depths of home. And the visceral connection is everything. And I want to bring a moment to the process of healing the body through movement and how important Mm. this is and how listening Mm. to our feelings really allows us and guides us into this process of clearing these energies that have been created by these patterns, programs, lights, whatever form and fashion that have been bestowed upon us in the world in which we just live. So we can clear away all those extra noise, find it within to silence our darkness, sit in the silence of our darkness. And then we can find our light here and we can channel it with consciousness to the best of our ability. And it's a practice. These words are the wind, the air of it. The water is that which is within. The feelings, the earth is putting it to practice, establishing it consistently. The fire is the passion, that which keeps it alive. The desire to want to see it grow then we are out here just bending all the elements and we can't do it without this space within and without ourselves. And it's so important to move about this process the best we can. And one of my greatest, greatest teachers is my intuition. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Honestly, and I've been introduced to this path through, I want to share right now this book mm-hmm. that came to me, unless it's not within reach. It is. Oh, maybe I'm being teased. (laughs) Well, I have the name. And it's called The Intuitive Way, A Guide to Learning from Inner Wisdom by Penny Pierce. Mm. And that book I found at a half-price bookstore when I was 18 years old, just before I moved out here to California, Ohio. And my mother's always like encouraged me, you know, listen to your intuition, listen to that feeling within. And then in this book, I found it. Intuitively, I was in tune to it. And it's like this big, thick guidebook that has all these awesome, here it is, all these awesome practices and um, just journals. This book has been such a great guide for me initiating and starting my journey in consciousness. I've been out fresh, out of the nest, doing my own thing. Like this is what introduced me to listening to how the communication how the universe communicates to us consistently, especially when we allow ourselves open to the conversation. Would you want to play a game? Would you mind if I flip to a random page and just see what the book has to say? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, I'm going to start flipping the pages. You tell me when, okay? hmm Ready? hmm Go. No. <laughs> Left or right? Left. I'm going to scroll and you tell me when to stop. Okay. Okay. Starting. No. My, my finger pretty much points down a space that I had highlighted because I always annotate my books. Uh, this is like in the preface, the preface of the book. So page 36 
in Roman numerals, uh, how to proceed the guidelines and the tools. <clears throat> it goes like this. Power accumulates by consistently using the talents you were given from doing what you love repeatedly in the world. Be creative every day, be the artist and do the artwork. You must saturate your energy field with who you, with who and what you are. You must saturate your energy field with who and what you are. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this book is magic. Thank you, Penny mm. Pierce. Thank you. Yeah. And that's what we're doing here right now. That's what we're doing here right now. Mm -hmm. So thank you for holding this space to allow us to sit, simply sit and saturate and to recognize all of the pains and all of the pleasures that we get to enjoy and alchemize here. That's really mm -hmm. what we're here to do. And the another shouts out, the great book, The Alchemist, was another conduit. Like I'm a, I'm a reader, I'm a writer, and a big part of my journey is learning how to become the author of my life and write my own story. And the tarot has been a great tool and gift and guiding teacher along this fashion. So I think it's a perfect segment of conversation considering that was your conduit. That was your sign to release the karma and the ties which have been binding you. And you got to do that in the space that is here today. But I reside and you've then fluttered your wings and allowed yourself to free yourself from the cocoon and are now finding your home within and without you. Thank you. And I feel like I also want to mention, like, on this concept of home, um, like, I, I think it's important to recognize that also home, like you said, it is a state of mind, and it's a state of your heart. And although, you know, even for the people who might find themselves in geographies who are not that don't feel absolutely resonant, recognizing that every single phase that we move through in our life is meant to teach us these deep and beautiful lessons. And when we've completed a phase in a certain place, we naturally know and we're ready to move along to our next lesson and our next embodiment. And there are so many beautiful places on this earth that we get to call home because ultimately this whole earth is our home. And being someone who has grown up in a bunch of different places and traveled a lot, the main thing that I've come away with is that everyone is the same in that we're all different. So yeah. there's, yeah. There's yeah, I love that flip. I was just changed, like, huh? Everyone's the same. And you're like, but now we're all different. I'm like, thank goodness. <laughs> you're going to find everything all all facets, all degrees, all different like phases of life in every place that your heart draws you to. And even the places where you're born, they all have a big significance. But the biggest thing I feel like is cultivating this internal home, this internal palace, this sacred space. Like I call it my mind palace. And it's like, no matter what external situation is happening, no matter where I might find myself, I have this place within myself to always come home to and to house all of these different parts of me and to just kind of like bridge them out of the places that they might have been before and bring it all into this heart space and this internal home. So our external reality can shift. We can feel drawn to one place and then another place or maybe just keep moving. But this groundedness and this home always lives within and also this connection that we have with others always lives no matter where we are physically. But yeah, I would, I would love to hear what you have with the tarot and what you'd like to share. If you'd maybe like to pull a card and yeah. see if anything comes out. I do want to allow a moment to just like receive what you just said. Thank you for just allowing us to remember the importance of continuing to cultivate our home. Mm. absolutely because we're not taught this at school <laughs> except earth school mm. which is the ultimate home i really appreciate this idea these are my favorite kinds of conversations mm. um, thank you. me too and and thank you so much for holding that structure as well <laughs> and the awareness of time <laughs> so Cheers. Like, yeah. teamwork, teamwork. that's something i'm like yeah. step into like that's my masculine energy which is not something i've uh 
I think we're all doing dealing with our world has very few mm. examples of healthy masculine, right? And most often it does have to just simply do with time, but then it just like warps that with like money. We can get to that another conversation. Actually, mm. I think that's a perfect way to begin because that's a big part of my journey of healing 